Okay, so first we're going to talk about different types of evaluations. Um, so programs are complicated things, as you've seen um, throughout the semester. At the beginning, you had to kind of draw out an entire logic model for um, the program that you're working on for your final project. And that took a lot of work because there are so many different inputs and activities and outputs and outcomes that are all interconnected. Um, and it's tricky to keep track of all of that. Um, it's also tricky to make sure all of those different parts are working. Um, and that is the whole goal of program evaluation, is to make sure each element of the logic model is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, so in this class, we have focused on one specific type of evaluation throughout the semester, and that's impact evaluation, um, which is one of the harder types of evaluation. Because here, what your ultimate goal is, is to check to see if the program is causing the social change that it was designed to do. Um, which requires causal inference tools. You can't just run stats with a regression and see if um, the program causes something because correlation is not causation. So we have to go through all of these different um, statistical approaches to find causation. Um, so that that's been the focus throughout the semester is this impact evaluation. But that is not the only kind of program evaluation. There are tons of others. Um, and each of these other forms of evaluation, um, as you read, I think in session three-ish, um, we talked about uh, different forms of evaluation. Um, each one of these types targets a specific part of a logic model. Um, so if you look back to this logic model we've been referencing throughout the semester for um, this truancy prevention program in the, at the Provo School District, um, it has a whole bunch of different moving parts. Um, it's got inputs and activities and outputs and outcomes all kind of flowing together. Um, and different types of evaluation focus on specific parts of the logic model. So with impact evaluation, which is what we've been focusing on, th on in this class, the goal is to see if all of this, um, all the inputs, activities, and outputs, Puts, which we just label the program, if all of this program stuff causes um, no truancy, causes better grades, causes increased commitment to school, and causes reduced risk factors for delinquency. So that's been the question throughout the semester, um, is does the whole program all together cause these outcomes. But you also have different types of evaluation that zoom in on other parts of this logic model. Um, first, you have um, something called needs assessment um, or something called formative evaluation. Um, this is uh, basically a question that you or an evaluation that you undertake at the beginning of planning a program, or you should in theory. Um, it asks questions like this, do we need to actually have this program? Um, what should the program do? What should the outcomes that we care about be? Um, what kind of inputs and activities and outputs does it need to create? Um, and that's the whole focus of needs assessment. There's no, there's not really any statsy tools. You're not trying to um, pre-register any hypotheses. You're not doing any causal inference. This is more um, working directly with communities um, and your target population to see what they need and what your organization, whether it be a nonprofit or a local government or something, um, if your organization can help with or help fulfill that need. Um, and so this involves interviews, surveys, focus groups, um, just a whole bunch of different um, tools to investigate the target population and their needs and then design a program that fits what needs to happen. Um, you should, in theory, do this before you start the program um, or if you're considering any changes to the program. You can do kind of a mid-program formative assessment or needs assessment to see if everything's on track. Um, so. Again, needs assessment here is making sure there's a foundational need for the inputs and activities and outputs that the program is creating. So it's important throughout the semester, we've just kind of assumed that any program that, you're, that we're working with went through this process. Um, as you've noticed, potentially with your programs, you may not have gone through this, um, the programs that you're evaluating. Maybe somebody just had a, an idea um, and they decided to do it and they didn't do a formal needs assessment. That happens all the time in the real world. And then later people decide that they do need to do some sort of needs assessment and so they adjust and that's fine. Um, but this is a whole different world of evaluation unrelated to the causal inference stuff that we've been doing this semester. Um, you can also do process evaluation or program monitoring. 
So this type of evaluation looks at basically the different cogs in the logic model to make sure everything is running smoothly. Um, it asks all sorts of questions like this. Do the inputs go to the right places? Are the activities working correctly? Do the activities produce the right number of outputs? Um, it just This makes sure that the program keeps humming along. Um, again, this does not involve statistical tools necessarily. You're not doing any causal inference here. You're also not really doing any um, focus groups or um, background surveys or anything like that. This is more monitoring the actual program itself and making sure that everything works. And so here you might have monitoring systems or specific benchmarks or key performance indicators or KPIs um, that the people in your organization are supposed to meet. Um, you have regular reports that the program creates and generates, and this is kind of the, the monitoring and evaluation side of this. This you're supposed to do during the program just to make sure it's working. Um, this is more of a management tool. Um, you're not making sure that it's causing outcomes. You're just making sure that inputs are working, activities are working, outputs are being generated, and that's the focus. Um, a very common way of seeing this um, in practice is with a dashboard. Um, there are lots and lots of ways of, of presenting a whole bunch of program data through a dashboard. If you go to Google and search for program monitoring dashboard, you'll see a billion different examples of, of ways of measuring progress here. So this is um, from a region in Australia. This is an actual um, um, public-private partnership dashboard showing um, different indicators that this organization's focused on and how they've been progressing over time and how um, basically making sure all of their activities are working. Um, again, there are tons of other ex examples of this. Um, no causal inference here. This is just making sure that performance benchmarks and indicators are being met. Um, and so as a manager, you can look at this and, and see where things are failing, and then you can intervene and try to improve a specific elements of the program. Um, dashboards you can actually make in R. Um, if you search on Google for, um, a f for R Flex Dashboard, um, I will put a link to it in the content for uh, this class session, um, you can basically create a markdown document um, that you can divide these different sections up by markdown headings. And so this would be like a heading one, and this would be another heading one. Um, and you can have a chart directly there, and it will, when you knit the document, it creates a dashboard for you. Um, and so you can then basically create your own monitoring and evaluation dashboard using the tools that we've learned about in this class. And so that's kind of fun and exciting, and I recommend going and playing with it because it, it's cool stuff. Um, another form of evaluation that you saw in the CDC reading that I had you look at is outcome evaluation. This is a little bit tricky because that's also been kind of the focus of the semester. We've been looking at impact evaluation, or does the program cause one of the outcomes to occur? Outcome evaluation, by definition, is also evaluating outcomes. Um, but the way the CDC defines this is it's um, basically are the activities and outputs and all of the program elements leading to kind of the initial outcomes. So it's more of a focus on the short term um, outcomes that you care about, not the longer term outcomes like does this program fix poverty? Um, that's a hard thing to measure. That's where impact evaluation is. Outcome evaluation is more like does this program cause the people that we care about and the, the people that we are focused on in our target population, does it cause them to have kind of improved outcomes? So it's, it's a less broad version of impact evaluation. Um, the way you do this is with surveys, interviews with the target population. You can also use um, some of the Statsy tools we've learned about. Um, because this gets more into the causal inference side of things, where you want to see does the program cause specific outcomes to happen. Um, and you should do this throughout the program to make sure it's working. Um, I've seen programs include forms of outcome evaluation on their dashboards, and so you can have kind of the regular key performance indicators for monitoring, but you can also see if it's having a causal effect um, with specific outcomes, and that can also be part of your dashboard. So it's a thing that you can do. Um, another type of um, evaluation is cost-benefit analysis, which we have not covered at all in this class. Um, this is called, or another term for this is economic evaluation. The main question here is not, is the program working? Is it causing specific outcomes? Are all the cogs working? This is a question of, is it worth it? Um, do the benefits outweigh the costs? 
Um, and the way you do this is through a specific type of tool called um, cost-benefit analysis that involves a specific process, um, which you can take entire classes just on cost-benefit analysis. So don't worry if it seems really intimidating. The whole goal is not to even cover this in this class. But basically what you do with cost-benefit analysis is you convert every sort of cost and every sort of benefit into a dollar amount and then you apply a discount factor to each of those amounts over 10 years or 15 years or 20 years. Um, and then you convert all of those future costs and future benefits into something called net present value. And then you add up the net present value of costs and subtract the costs from the total net present value of the benefits. And basically in the end, you get a number that says, it, does this program have a positive net benefit or a negative net benefit? Um, and so that's the whole goal here is to see if the program itself is worth it. Um, and you should generally do this during the program or when it's done, um, so you can prove to your funders that it's working or not working. Um, and so it's a good tool to use. Um, so there are tons of different resources for cost-benefit analysis out on the internet. Um, it's a very common thing in the federal government. Most federal agencies require that new laws and regulations go through cost-benefit analysis, and they have a specific template, basically, that you use that you should, like, a specific pattern of, of analyses that you should follow. Um, and so this, again, shows, um, this is from a cost benefit analysis about backup cameras that were they were considering making mandatory in new cars. Um, and so they figured out the costs of that and then had different discount rates and had different levels of potential reductions in crashes. And so they have all of these hypothetical numbers to show if it's worth it to include these, um, these backup cameras and make it kind of um, legally required. Um, so that's, that's cost benefit analysis, super brief overview. Um, the last type of um, evaluation that you need to know is impact evaluation, and that's what we've done in this class. You're all experts at this now. Um, the main question here is, did the program cause lasting change? Um, and the way you answer that is with these causal inference tools. The, whole, the main question here is, does the program cause a change in society? Um, you can do this during or at the end of the program, um, similar to outcome evaluation, just to make sure it's working as you're going and to make sure it's worked when, when you're all the way done. Um, this is, again, the intuition behind impact evaluation here. Um, your whole goal is you have some outcome and you want to measure what would happen, basically the difference between the outcome with the program and the outcome without the program, and that's your program effect or your causal effect. The only way to find this dotted line is to figure out some sort of counterfactual um, or a control group. And so that's what we've been focused on throughout this semester is how to find an effective control group so that you can measure program effect correctly. Um, and now you're all experts at this. You have a whole bunch of different tools for doing that. Um, so here are, here's kind of a summary of those five types of evaluation. Um, again, you can take entire classes focused on just one of these types of evaluation. Um, we've done that for impact evaluation in this class. We barely mentioned needs assessment process evaluation. Um, I told you to Google how to make a dashboard. That's basically all you're getting for process evaluation and monitoring. Sorry. Um, but th it's not possible to cover every single one of these things in a single class. Um, so at least you know about them now and you can seek out more information on your own and, and continue to um, try to evaluate and monitor and analyze programs. So good luck in the future with your own programs.